Jordan Love earned a fat contract in the offseason, led the Packers to the second round of the playoffs. He is the franchise quarterback in Green Bay. So what does the NFL think of Jordan Love as he enters year two? Mike Sando joins me from The Athletic. His QB tiers is one of the pieces of preseason content. This is becoming an annual tradition that he comes on and talks Packers quarterbacks. First it was Aaron Rodgers, now it's Jordan Love. Let's go. You are Locked On Packers, your daily Green Bay Packers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski and I cover the Packers for The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked on Packers, the number one Packers podcast on the internet and the show for fans who know what happened. They want to know why and how. Thanks to everyone who makes Locked on Packers their first listen every day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. Today's episode brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Download the Game Time app today. Create an account and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first ticket purchase. Terms apply. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. Mike Sando on the show today. Just quick housekeeping note before we move into the conversation with Mike. Um, the Packers. We did our final cut show yesterday. Practice squad is out. Uh, a couple players did not make the practice squad because they went somewhere else. Grant DuBose got claimed in Miami. Royce Newman got claimed in Tampa Bay. Anthony Johnson Jr. got claimed in New York. 26 players out of many hundreds cut were claimed. Three of them were Green Bay Packers. More than 10% of all players in the NFL claimed on waivers from final cuts were Green Bay Packers. It tells you how deep this roster was. And, and Brian Gutekinds talked about when he talked about Christian Welch, who is not coming back on the practice squad. He's going to go back to Baltimore, where he came from. He said there were more than 53 players. And sometimes this just happens. Now, do I agree with, for example, the Anthony Johnson Jr. over Zane Anderson conversation? I, it doesn't make sense to me. It's not my call. We talked about why yesterday with Rich Passaccia. But one thing we have to talk about quickly, quickly, quickly before we get to Mike is the kicker. Because Anders Carlson got cut. We assumed that meant Greg Joseph was in. It turns out it was not because Anders Carlson was so bad that they thought Greg Joseph was was great. It was that Anders Carlson was just so bad. That's it. They didn't have deep faith in Greg Joseph either. And so he's out. Braden Arvison, they claimed on waivers, kicked a 57-yarder in the preseason, um, kicked the game winner in the preseason, and is someone who, uh, over the course of his career at North Carolina State, was not an extremely consistent kicker, but he made some monster kicks. And I said this yesterday, what you want out of that kicker position is someone who's going to make the kicks they need to make. The kicks they need to make. He's got an absolute hose, and you want him. You you, you want to be able to say, okay, look, if it's 4th and 12, at the 40, you can give yourself a chance. Anders Carlson did not really have the leg for that. This guy does, in a, in a dome at least. We'll see how he kicks at Lambeau. We'll see outside, like, look, went to North Carolina State. Um, so does he does he have a lot of experience kicking in the gold? No, he doesn't. But I think he's got the leg to do it. And so this is, this is going to be your kicker. It, it, Matt LaFleur did not seem super pleased that this is how this played out. But this was these were the options that they went with. And so... This is where they're left. So I, this was a, a player that was identified um, by a lot of, of media people, not just in Green Bay, but in other places where the kicking situation is not great. That could be a target. Nick Folk is awesome in Tennessee. But they brought this guy in. He, he kicked really well in the preseason. The one miss was a 58-yard field goal. Um, and so you're kind of just like, oh, fine. Like they let him in North Carolina State. Most, like a, a big share of his misses. He never missed an extra point and never missed an extra point in preseason, a big share of his misses in college were 50-plus yarders. So on kicks inside the 50, he was very good in North Carolina State. Just just a little piece to go with here. Let's get into our conversation with Mike Sando. 
Joining me now from The Athletic, the QB tier whisperer. Maybe we'll just call you the QB the QB whisperer, Mike. Uh, Mike Sando. Uh, and uh, I, I, this we've been, we've been doing this long enough to have been talking about Aaron Rodgers being on this list, um, which, is, which is fun. And, and now we get to talk about another Packers quarterback. The largest jump. Um, it, what, what was it? So 13 spots. But what was what was the stat? The largest jump he tied with Brock Purdy for like the largest jump into the yeah the, into the tier largest, two. Yeah, well, the largest uh, number. If you so they're obviously tiered, but they're also ranked. So right, the largest jump in ranking spots last off season to this off season would be Brock Purdy, who's and Jordan Love. They each went up 13 spots. That's a lot in one year. But yeah. I think it's also reflective of the fact that when you have somebody who who makes it into the survey initially, but hasn't played much at all. In in the case of Purdy, five or six games. You know, in the case of Love, fewer than that. Really relevant. You yeah. Know, uh, games. A lot of the voters then. I just like to put him in there for the discussion, but they're going to get a lot of fours because that's just kind of I. I don't have enough information. It's not like they're slamming either one of those guys. So you can sometimes like even Patrick Mahomes was made his debut in this thing. He had had one start. I just put him in there because I wanted to discuss. No one's going to give him a two right. know, after one start, even if you love him. So that's why you can make such a big jump. Uh, uh, but still, it's good. He, he got into tier two right away. You know, um, can't complain I, I, I want to I want to dig into the, the stuff that you heard about love. But but I, I want to zoom out for a second because I, I found myself going into this really wondering what the results were going to be. Like, I feel like in years past, we had a better understanding, especially at the top of like, these are definitely the clear cut guys. We know sort of the order here, but there were, there were some surprises in here with the ordering. And the, and I, I, I feel like that's reflective of the quarterback environment that we find ourselves in. You've been doing this a long time. Did, did, does this moment feel unique to you in any way? It feels unusual to have only three quarterbacks in tier one. Yeah. I think we've seen, you know, and with Roger's situation and him falling out of tier one, he's not retired yet, but there's just been a steady stream of these guys that that were probably going to be a one leaving the game. You know, Brady, Breeze, Rogers hasn't left the game. But like I said, there's questions. Right. So there were some guys you could kind of take to the bank in tier one. But Ren Roethlisberger, you know, uh, or you, these are all guys that have played within the last five years that are just gone forever. And so last year at this time, I did a story going into the year. It was like the youngest opening day week one starters in the league since mm -hmm. like the 50s or something. Yeah. It, so that's definitely new. And I don't think it means that the quarterbacks suck now. You know, it's just that <laughs> they just got young. And so there's a bunch of guys in there. Like, I feel like in tier two and, or yeah, tier, tier two has 11 guys in it. And even to some extent in tier three, there's a lot of guys who could look pretty good if they're in the right system or, you know, have the right thing around them or could look really bad. Uh, uh, you know, they they may not be able to overcome a super bad situation. Uh, but but there's a lot of variance. I think Jared Goff would be the perfect example of sure. that, right? But then you sprinkle in these young guys like uh, Stroud, who made the highest debut. He's eighth overall. Highest debut for anyone making their quarterback tiers debut in their second season coming off of a rookie year. Broke Herbert's record for that. Uh, we mentioned Jordan Love. You know, there's there's a couple guys there that people are, you know, really high on, think that they could go super high uh, in it. So, and then you bring in this rookie class with Caleb Williams. I'm sure you haven't heard anything about the bears. <laughs> you know, you never ever mentioned the bears. But no, there's some, there's some interesting young guys. I think now that we'll be waiting to see what they do. We'll be back with more with Mike Sando in just a second here on locked on Packers. Today's episode brought to you by our friends at five hour energy. I don't know about you, but I need a little boost after lunch in that like two to three o'clock range. Sometimes with my lunch, I'm just like, I need, I need a shot. And, and sometimes when it, in the case of five hour energy, an actual shot with zero sugar plus a convenient portable size. It's the perfect pick me up for getting stuff done. Plus five hour energy has all sorts of flavors, watermelon, tropical burst, grape, berry, and more. There's a flavor for everyone. You can try them all. On the site, you even have the option to build your own 12-pack or 24-pack. You choose the flavors, and it's delivered right to your door. Love that option. 
Go to 5hourenergy.com. You have to use the number 5 hourenergy.com and get 5 hour energy products today. Use my promo code locked on FB to receive $20 off your order. This offer only valid until September 30th. So get on it. An order cannot be used with any other promotion. The code is not good on subscription orders. Go to 5hourenergy.com today. Thank you for making Locked On Packers your first listen every day. For your second listen, go check out Locked On Fantasy Football. That, that draft's got to be coming up. So you want to win it, go listen to Locked On Fantasy Football to get all the latest insight, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. How much, when you when you talk to people, and, and I feel like this is partially a Jordan Love question, is we have all of these guys now off the Shanahan tree, and even the guys that like Kevin Stefanski who don't get labeled as the quarterback whisperers, and these offensive geniuses are still running versions of this this yeah. Shanahan McVay zombie offense that has now had its spin put on by a number of different coaches. Is is that conversation more than than you're used to? Just because it seems like so many of these teams have quarterbacks that are ideally suited to be in the offenses that they are in, but aren't a Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes type guy where it's like we know no doubt. What what's going on here? This guy is going to produce. I think you're you're totally right. I think that's been the the trend in football is to try to get your coordinators to be like that, right? We're, instead of, you know, I think the 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 old way, you know, would have been we're we're looking for the elite guy, right? And 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 we've got an offensive system we're going to run, and, and let's hope it fits them. Well, <laughs> this system, you know, th- there's been a lot more things like uh, we'll just go back even. 15 years, Cam Newton comes in, they run a whole different offense than the right. league had seen for him. Or Lamar comes in and people, you know, old school people would be like, I don't see it working. And they say, well, watch, because we're going to run an offense that's unlike any offense in the league. And it works. And so I think we're seeing more of a tailoring for what the guys can do. And then these systems, uh, you know, th- these play action systems and uh, are easier for the quarterback. Uh, too. They, they take the pressure off the quarterback, which seems like a pretty good idea, uh, you know, to do, but you're right. It lets some of these guys be, well, look at this, look at the, look at tier three, top of tier three, to a tongue of a low of 53 million bucks, top of tier three, Trevor Lawrence, 55, yeah. Kyler Murray was at the top of the market when he did his deal and Deshaun Watson's going to be getting paid $130 million in the future, no matter what. So what does that tell you? Right. Uh, well, in the bottom of tier two is what? It's like Jared Goff, Kirk Cousins, Jordan Love. All of that same sort of J- Jared Goff just got paid. He's in the system. Jordan yeah. Love just got paid. Kirk Cousins always, always gets paid. But but he was just in that system as well. And a lot of those guys, you know, I would put Jordan Love in a different category from Kirk Cousins. But, but a lot of those guys are not like... This is the prototype of what I want coming out, and we'd take him number one overall. Right, right. If you if you were to start at the top of this draft and say who would you take number one overall in any draft, you're Mahomes, Burrow, Allen, maybe Lamar now, uh, possibly Herbert for sure, Stafford, yes, Rogers, yes, Stroud, I guess. I mean, he might be in there, but now you start getting into, you know, Dak, Goff, Hertz, Purdy, Cousins. I don't know that you would. You know, they're not exactly what you're looking for, right? Always coming out but look you can have really good systems one of the one of the fun quotes in this the piece was Dak Prescott can roll out of bed and throw for 450 yards <laughs> when somebody yeah. said that I was like all right I'm actually going to check how many 450 yard games he's had and it's true he's like in the top three of all time yeah 450 yard games right it's crazy so yeah I think I think you can have a successful quarterback without having an elite quarterback this also ties into the the way we open the discussion it, is th- this weird time in quarterbacking because some of these elite players like Justin Herbert that doesn't have playoff success to speak of. Josh Allen has the unfortunate um, mishap of going up against Patrick Mahomes every year in the postseason. Lamar Jackson, you know, he's got some some playoff, uh, you know, shortcomings. And Dak Prescott, of course, that, I mean, that was what triggered this for me. He's got major playoff shortcomings. And so it's like, Okay, th- that's normally how we measure these quarterbacks. We normally, because we've got these older guys, they've got the playoff scars. When you look at this group, the top 15, there's like three guys who've been to a Super Bowl, and that's it, really. Yeah, and Mahomes is the big stopper in the AFC. That's yeah. frustrating. I mean, I, like if you're a Baltimore fan, 
how crushing was it to lose last year with that team? And now this right. whole season feels like it's not even being evaluated until what happens in one playoff game, which <laughs> didn't go any way. That's why I think that's been the Bills like last three seasons. It's been the Bills last three seasons. And that's why I think it's fairer to do that for like a Dak Prescott. He's been around 10 years. He's had multiple playoffs and we've kind of seen the same story over and over. That mm -hmm. becomes a fair assessment of, okay, there could be just something missing, right? In terms of his ability to really uh, be a tier one and drive it over the top. But for some of these other guys that have been around a short amount of time and you run into Mahomes a couple of times, I mean, uh, there's not a lot of people that are going to, they're going to beat those guys. They're going to beat Mahomes. Who? Right. What I would like to see, though, like in the case of like a, a Lamar, some of these guys, when they go when they go toe to toe with Mahomes, you'd like to see, hey, this is a shootout. You know, hey, yeah. tip our caps to Mahomes. He had the ball last, but our guy went 32 of 48 for 387 and three <laughs> touchdowns and would have beat any other quarterback today. Right. I think when that type of th when you go down swinging like that, I think you're going to get more tier one votes than when you score 10 points in the playoffs. And it doesn't look good when you have to pass, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's why Kyle Shanahan said, we can't do this with Jimmy G. We can't beat Patrick Mahomes with Jimmy G. And they went out and they tried they tried to fix that. All right. We've 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 vamped long enough here. Mike, we got to talk yeah. about Jordan Love. Um, yeah. I, I, uh, I judge football, especially anonymous quote, um, football speak by the number of curse words used. And so um, Jordan Love, multiple, multiple major curse words used. We don't, we don't have to repeat them, but. I love like football Great. coaches and evaluators when they have, when they just are speechless, they revert to, to cussing. So the, uh, my primary editor on the, on the story made that exact observation. And we're like, he's <laughs> like, Hey man, this is leading. It's, it, it's just leading. I think there used to be more curse words throughout the whole quarterback tiers than there are now. Mm. Uh, uh, but, uh, but uh, we noticed that too. So I think that's a good, I think that is a good, uh, observation by you. And I thought the, the commentary on him was pretty positive, pretty ringing endorsement. -y. You know, some people want to withhold the judgment and there were a couple of naysayers, but I don't think anyone was seeing a fatal flaw. Right. I don't think anyone is saying, yeah, people are just, he's, they're fooling him, smoking mirrors. He's here's why he's going to be not successful. I think it was more, Hey, relax. We don't have to get so excited <laughs> right away. I mean, I know that they have replaced uh, Favre successfully with Rodgers, and I know it looks good right now. But just relax. Let him. Let's let him do this for a while. And I think that's reasonable to do too. You can certainly be excited, but what some of these guys, C.J. Stroud, they just haven't played that much. So um, you you can't. You don't want to annoy them too soon. But to me, bottom of tier two. That's perfect for Jordan Love. And let's see what he does this year. He'll move, make a move up if he's has another good year. Well, and that was, I, I believe the first, the first quote in the story was if there's any one of these guys who can be a one, it's, it's Jordan Love. And, and I thought that was, that's just such a perfect thing where it's like, he's not there yet. We, we understand that, especially if tier one is going to be three guys. Like he doesn't belong, yeah. you know, like QB four or QB five in the league. Like that's, that's not what we're saying. Um, so it's, you're right. Like the feedback was all really good. And, and that I think is what get Packer fans excited. Like if people in the NFL are going, no, this guy's scary. Like he's really talented. We want to see more. It's year one. We expect a guy in year four to look like this. And I think that's probably where some of the disconnect, for example, CJ Stroud, you mentioned hasn't played a lot. We don't have to rehash how I feel about the, the comparison there with those guys. My audience has certainly heard enough about it from me, but he's a rookie. And so I think he's he's evaluated differently based on that. Was that oh to totally yeah? Well, think I. This is the point I make on Stroud is we all misevaluated what Houston was. So yeah. when when he came in and had success, we were thinking this is a bad roster. Nick Casario, what are they doing? They first time head coach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we like to make a run. They got the first PFF guy calling the offense. Yeah, they're throwing this guy in here, and it's it's like. And then they do great, and the quarterback looks good, and everyone's like, wow, well, this quarterback's amazing, which is fair. But in retrospect, you know, offensive line was pretty good. In retrospect, weapons were pretty good. Yeah. In retrospect, maybe Sloak's pretty good. Yeah. In retrospect, maybe their team was better than we thought. But, you know, the second overall pick came in and saved the day. So do you get a little bit of an outsized credit than you would have gotten if going into the year people thought, oh, Great, he's got a great coordinator, a really good offensive line. There's some good weapons here. Uh, this should really help him, right? That wasn't the narrative. 
So right. I think that probably helped him a little bit. Well, and, and you look at where they stand now. They're one of the hot teams in the AFC. Like people are picking them to go to the AFC championship game against, and wouldn't that be fun? You know, Texans chiefs in the AFC championship game, Mahomes versus Stroud. Like what a, yeah. what a perfect tensile test for the QB tiers, right? Like these, those are the moments that, that you want to play for. I also think the final play of Jordan love season had to have played into the, I mean, I know you're, you're doing this sort of over the cross, um, but that last play to be an interception when you have a chance to go out and win that I, that if in you asked me at the end of January, how I felt about it, I might've felt different than if you asked me in May, because it wasn't, you know, right after that had happened. I, I do wonder if that colors the way that there is any, any perception of the way that Jordan love played. Yeah, no, no one mentioned that, you know, and really? I'm sort of, I'm only start, I'm starting this after the draft, so I'm not doing it right after the season. Okay, good. You know, so, um, and, and so no, that wasn't really coming up. Some of the people said, "Hey, there were some. He had some great games, and everybody remembers the Dallas game. But there were some, there were some not so good games sprinkled in there. Tampa Bay was fairly late in the season. They, yep. I don't think that was a great game. Giants uh, wasn't like great. Mentioned the last game of the season. So if you wanted to try to pick and find it. If you wanted to say this guy was lights out down the stretch every game, that's probably a little bit of a stretch. You know, it wasn't quite as glittering all the time in every <laughs> game, but there was a, but it still felt good. I mean, it was still good, but. So as, as you're looking at the, the landscape here, um, you know, Kirk Cousins is in this same tier. Jared Goff is in this same tier, but there are some young quarterbacks in this tier too. Jordan Love was one of the guys, as we said, who is, who is, sort of been identified as someone who could get up to tier one from just from your perspective, I'm not asking you to speak from any, for anybody else, but what would you want to see to go? This, this would look like a tier one guy to me this year. I think they would make a big jump and be one of the top seeds probably Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the NFC with the quarterback really driving a lot of the success. You know, I think that, uh, you'll know when you see it, you know, I think you'll know when you see it and you'll feel it. And it would just be more of those games late in the year, just throughout the whole year. Yeah. All right. We're going to finish up with Mike Sando here in just a second on Locked on Packers. Today's episode brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you incredible deals only. So you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. That's a time saver. Plus, curation makes it easier to save on sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. You can actually buy more tickets because you can save time on going through them. You don't have to deal with the hassle that that can often come with having to buy tickets. Get panoramic views from your seats in the app before you buy. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app today. Create an account and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. Thanks for making Locked On Packers your first listen. Now go listen to Locked On Fantasy Football. Get daily insights on the fantasy draft strategies you need so you can win your league. You can find the link on Locked On Fantasy Football in the description so you don't need to search part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. I, don't I do wonder how, how the perception might change if you know he got hot for really a six-game stretch in the final eight and then the playoff game. If one of those had come in the middle of that bad five-game stretch, if maybe we would have felt a little bit different or if like the Raiders game is not on Monday Night Football and the Lions game is not on Thursday Night Football because yeah. everyone is seeing those things and remembering, oh yeah, that looked really bad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, he had to overcome the start to the season for sure. Yeah, uh, but but I think the Dallas playoff game everybody saw. Yeah, and that was uh, you know a statistically good Dallas defense uh, that year last year. So I think that really helped him, and it should. It was a it was a huge day. I mean, that looked like what it's supposed to look like. You know, mm-hmm. it was amazing. Yeah, in the game. So that I- was the quote in there. He had a you know there was a bunch of swearing around it. A perfect pass. I love that. Okay. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can't, I can't not ask you about the feedback on Aaron Rodgers. Like I, it yeah. is so hard to to do this now. You're removed from the Achilles and people are understanding. Okay. We don't know what version of him we're going to get. The last version in green Bay didn't look great, but everyone assumes 
he was kind of checked out in that circumstance. So yeah, what was yeah. what was the feedback that that you were getting on Aaron Rodgers? If he's all the way back and healthy, he's still a one. I think yeah. people feel that. Uh, just real questions about uh, whether that's going to be true, right? Can he hold up and take the beating? Uh, you know, he's going to be playing. With a, one of the quotes in the quarterback tiers last year was, "Look out! He's going to play way more games on turf than he ever has before." And at this age, that can be a interesting thing. And then. You know, I don't think anyone thought it was going to take four plays at all. But, you know, I think that's just, can he do this for the grind of the whole season? Like we said, on turf, taking some shots um, anymore. You know, and remember his Green Bay tenure ended with him having, a, I think, a thumb injury, right? He played hurt. Thumb and then and then ribs. Th- thumb and then ribs, rib injury. So, you know, that's the real just concern. I think if he was could be healthy every game. I, I don't think he's going to play bad ball, but so it gets harder to overcome as you get older. There's going to be a fall off at some point. Some people who were a little harsher on him this year thought they, you know, thought there was some downturn a little bit that last year. So do you think he's going to be suddenly better now? You know, I don't know. I love the quote in there though, that where the guy said, Hey, the guy who put him in tier one said, those people putting him in tier two, are they on the 29 teams that would be better instantly a quarterback if he was there? <laughs> I thought was a fun. That was a I fun, did. Yeah, uh, I appreciated that. that. Fun quote. So the, you know, the league. I've kinda, yeah. I was going to say a lot of people have Jets fatigue and Rogers fatigue. And you got to be careful, not let that color your analysis. Because he might be really good still. Yeah. And they may be a good team. You know, there's been, they've just been so easy to downplay or or roll your eyes at the jets and rogers if you want to do so yeah uh, and and, ev- and the all the word out of camp is that he and garrett wilson when they're not yelling at each other on the sideline are absolutely dialed in on the field that there, there's some major yeah. Devonte adams 20 2019 2020 kind of vibes there so he's got a lot of he's got a i mean it's funny he he i think he has a chip on his shoulder and a lot to, thought to prove this year even though, I mean, come on, he's a Hall of Famer who's been <laughs> tier one every year. But I think he feels like there's, he's got to prove it. And that's why when you look at this quarterback tiers thing and he gets votes in four tiers, I mean, come on. That's showing some skepticism to him that he hasn't faced before. So um, I can't wait to see it. Do you think he's going to have a good year? I think when he's healthy, he will have a good year. Yeah, and I, I just don't know. I, I don't. I don't know how you can have a lot of confidence that he's going to be healthy consistently because he's just he's forty and was just had a major injury. How I, I just I don't know how you can be confident in saying he's going to play seventeen games. And, and that's and that's remember, the hard part. And remember when Brady was at the end there, he was throwing it so fast and he just didn't want to get hit as much. You could kind of tell it looked a little different. Mm-hmm. Now Rogers late in his career really did a good job of getting his legs strong. You know, I think he, he did do that. So if he still has that sturdiness and can stand in there, I mean, maybe he can do it, but I'm kind of with you where it's been a while he's older. Let's play some games and see if he can do it. It'd be great to see. There was a great anecdote in the, in the book that Ian O'Connor wrote. Um, he was just on locked on Packers about how early in his career, uh, for those of you on YouTube, he's got the, we got the book here. Um, that earlier in his career, he was a little hesitant to lift heavy on his legs, didn't want to put the strain on it. And then actually a couple years ago, went on Pat McAfee and said, I changed my career by lifting heavy on my legs to get my legs stronger. I needed that base probably because the arm starts to go a little bit. You got to use your legs to generate a little bit more power. So now he's been rehabbing his legs. Maybe this is, you know, maybe he has one of those throwback, you know, seasons and the Packers are great. And we get the, we get the Jets Packers. Wouldn't that be fun? As well, if we're talking about, you know, uh, guest booking the NFL here. Um, all right. Last thing, Mike, because I, I appreciate your, your time on this. Yeah. Um, no, no one wants to put the pressure of, you know, like Aaron Rodgers always in tier one on Jordan Love. But again, the feedback was was so positive. It's hard not to get excited about the potential of another tier one quarterback in Green Bay for you. Um, and, and maybe if you got, you got some feedback on this, where does Matt LaFleur fit into all of this? Because Aaron Rodgers rejuvenates his career, 2020, 2021 MVP. Um, and then now Jordan love, you know, if he's a tier two quarterback, he makes this big jump. If he can be into tier one, that has to say something about Matt LaFleur, doesn't it? So I'll do you one better than that. Cause someone mentioned this to me and I just need to look it up cause I don't have it in front of me. I'm calling up Matt LaFleur's career. And obviously, Matt LaFleur doesn't get credit for all the things that every quarterback did when he was an assistant coach or whatever. Right. 
But if you go through his career and you would say when he was with Washington, RG3 played the best ball of his career and was in the MVP discussion, right? Mm -hmm. was certainly a rookie of the year. He went to Atlanta for two years, and you would say Matt Ryan and played the best ball of his career. And then, grant, granted, Kyle Shannon gets a lot of the credit, and he should. I'm not saying, mm -hmm. that, but I'm saying he was he was there. Okay. Then he went to the Rams in 2017, and that would have been a really good year for Goff, right? Yep. Then he went to Tennessee in 2018, and that would have been a really good year for Tannehill, right? That was right before Tannehill. Tannehill. That that was Tannehill. the Mariota's got nerve damage in his hand. Blaine Gabbert year. Okay, he was kind of so hamstrung 18. by his quarterbacks there. So, okay. Okay. So that was one place, the one time you're right. The one time when he didn't have, then he goes to, to green Bay. And of course you inherit Rogers and you don't get credit for making Rogers a good quarterback. But Rogers statistically, you know, an MVP wise had really good, a really good year. So yeah. And he'd been kind of like wandering in the wilderness a little bit by his standards before that. Yeah. And you're right. And Okay. I'm looking at the Tennessee year. I mean, Marcus Mariota was seven and they went nine and seven. He was seven and six as a starter. I'm not saying he was amazing, but you know, he, his stats in that game in that season probably weren't worse than his stats in other, in other seasons. So no, it was, it know. was his most efficient statistical season of his career. Okay. So his most efficient statistical season of his career. There you go. Um, that's a pretty good, pattern i mean he's at least been involved in that success he's been a part of that success he's witnessed it he there hasn't been anybody who's had their worst year or had a bad year right right so i think that's interesting and i think matt lafleur is a little bit like brock purdy in this thing you know <laughs> where where after a while, the production just is going to speak for itself. Yeah. Like Brock Purdy keeps having years like last year and does it for 12 straight years. He'll go in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. right? uh, so when you start stacking it, and I always think a judge of a coach, when I look at coaches, head coaches, I look at over the course of a long career, did they change teams and have success? Or did they have success with different quarterbacks, right? Especially if you're an offensive play caller, you're, you're involved in that. And so I think this reflects really well that Jordan Love um, looks good so far and has even got a tier one vote in there. And he's already in tier two after Rodgers played, had a late career revival with them. Yeah. So I think it, you got it. There's got to be something there. As a Brock Purdy skeptic, uh, I, 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 that, that metaphor hurt me a little bit, but I, uh, no, I, I appreciate it. And I think you're I right. I think you're, I meant it well. I know. I mean, I'm like just Brock doesn't you. get credit, you know, either. You're right. He's good. He needs to get some. Yeah. It's, yeah. And you're right. If, if Brock Purdy, by the way, if Brock Purdy has 10 more years, like he did last year, he will moonwalk into the hall of fame. And my skepticism will be unwarranted at this point. It will look silly. Just like if you were skeptical of Kurt Warner that first year you go, Oh, well, this can't last. Well, he was a two time MVP. For a reason, he was a really, really good quarterback, and he took I, two I, teams to the Super Bowl. Yeah, so so you, there, at a certain point, you are what is what is the the Steve Martin quote where like be so good they can't they can't look away or be so good they can't they can't doubt you whatever it is like that's I think at a certain point you reach you reach that level. So, uh, Mike, you are already at that level. We cannot doubt you. I appreciate your time <laughs> as as always, and we'll uh, we'll talk again soon. I appreciate it. Really enjoyed it. Thanks. All right, thanks to Mike for joining the show. Awesome to talk with him. Um, awesome to get the insight on Jordan Love and a little, a little bit of Aaron Rodgers. Had to get a little bit of Aaron Rodgers in there as well. Um, we're back tomorrow. Ty Dunn on Jordan Love. More Jordan Love talk as we head toward week one. And if there's anything else that breaks things that happen, um, we will, of course, um, as I did at the top of the show, make sure we get on all of that. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Go check out our promo right now, our Jersey giveaway on Instagram. Go follow us on Instagram, like the giveaway post, tag a friend, and you are entered to win an official Jordan Love jersey. You want that jersey, go enter. Uh, and uh, while you're at it, why don't you follow us on TikTok, follow us on YouTube, subscribe to the podcast so you can stay locked on Packers.